Hi friends, this is Terry Squires with today's Nashville This Is Faith. I sat down with Zane and Donna King and they shared their journey of their kids overcoming addiction and they wrote a song about it. You won't want to miss this episode. The Lord will never leave you or forsake you, even in the darkest hour. He is by your side. With multiple top 10 songs across numerous national charts, Zane and Donna King has captured the hearts of audience around the U.S. and abroad. The journey this dynamic duel has traveled hasn't been without twists and turns, but they wouldn't trade a mile of it. They know that God in His grace brought them to where they are today, and it has been God's faithfulness in the couple's lives following a difficult season of walking with two of their children through addiction and recovery. This is their story. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Donna and Zane, it is so nice to have you. Welcome to Today's Nashville. All right. Thank you so much. I heard so much about you. You guys have been through many battles, haven't you? <laughs> Ooh, um, and we've learned as we yeah. journey through this life that we're not alone. I feel like there are a yeah. lot of people, right, who walk through things and that's why we have each other. So we can lean in and learn and experience things and then figure out that journey, how to trust God in, in all of that. So yes, we have, but we've also been very blessed. Battles and blessings. Battles and blessings. <laughs> now you're from Michigan. Yes, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's a Michigan guy. And where are you from, Zane? Well, if I talk very long, you're going to figure it out. <laughs> pretty Southern and uh, Arkansas. So, and literally like a farm boy growing up in Arkansas, met a city girl. And, uh, where did you all meet? <laughs> Well, we knew each other for years, yeah. actually, through the music industry and in other lives. And then we had gone kind of through a period of time. Where, where were you we, living at this okay, time? Okay, so both of us were living in Nashville. Okay. Um, I think in, it was... It's, Working in the music industry. How long have you been in, yeah. in Nashville? 30 for, years. 30. And well, did, I've been here for yeah. 22. Were you always... Music was always your passion, your yeah. career yes. choice? Okay. Yes, always. And we had kind of lost contact. We we had had known each other in passing and lost contact. And then one day, um, I had gone through kind of a hard, you know, reset of life uh, as a single mom raising my teenage daughter. And um, my mother kids were were adults at that time. And well, they still are. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but. It, God set us up on our first date. Yeah. Absolutely did. Because I was working with a record label in Hendersonville, Daywind Music, and I was meeting as a A&R on an album. And the producer of that album was this guy right here. <laughs> and uh, actually, I was filling in for, for the A&R, official A&R director of this record and because he was ill. And so anyway, I showed up and he showed up and then we agreed on every song we thought should be on the the album, which was kind of crazy. And then he said, do you want to go grab a, a coffee? And Well, did you know that, you know, he, she was a single? Well, I had no, I, well, I, I knew that, but, but it's been many years since I'd seen her. So, I mean, I just didn't even think about any of that. And now, how long course, ago was there this? She was. This was in 2010. Okay. Yeah. yeah about yeah. 14 years ago. We've been yeah. married 12 years now. So yeah, then I said, do you want to go grab some coffee or some dinner and uh, we'll just keep having this conversation. And so then we went and had a five hour conversation of which she um, talked for like four and a half hours. Um, this is not, he says this all the time what? and it's probably true. <laughs> no, we had a great time. And actually it's funny cause I left there and thought, okay, um, 
I weirdly hope that he calls me and asks me on an actual date, the one, you know, other than the, the one that God set up that in the office there and, and then with the coffee after. But, uh, and then two days later he called me and that was the rest of the story. And he has not just been a gift to my life, mm. but he has been an incredible gift to my children and their lives. And, um, is yeah. such a wonderful man of God who has meant so much more than just a marriage, but we truly have experienced together. I love of, how God yeah. bonds people together. Let's talk about your faith. Where were you before? I mean, when when did you um, follow, start following Jesus? I remember being on my grandparents' uh, couch and reading uh, Matthew. For specifically, I was reading Matthew 24, and I remember just the Spirit of God coming in to, to my heart right then. It was about three years later that I had an old-time preacher. He invited me to come to an altar, and I remember kneeling down and just tears running down my face and uh, being set free and knowing that Jesus was the Lord of my life. But you know, as life goes on, I mean, your faith gets tested, your faith gets challenged, and... Uh, and so all through, through the storms and the battles that we talked about, you know, uh, there's been hard roads, and we're going to talk about some of those hard roads we've been on. But he's been faithful. Yeah. He's been faithful. So that's that's my beginning story of yeah. my faith. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Donna? And mine is that I was not raised in a Christian home. In fact, we we weren't even the kind of family that went to church on Easter and Christmas. Yeah. We That was up, me too. You <laughs> too? Yeah. Yeah. So you know it well. CEOs, that's what you call them. Oh, Christmas, okay. Easter only. Oh, Christmas, oh, okay. Easter only. Yes. Gotcha. You're a CEO Christian. Yeah, CEO <laughs> Christian. So I, I was... I was always believe somewhere in me, even when I was a little girl, I remember laying in bed at night thinking, did I do too many bad things today? Like I would always wonder if I wasn't good enough. There was something in me that said that there, that there, there was a conviction that existed, you know, it's wild. Anyway, as time went on, uh, I grew up, became a young adult and at the age of 18, I was given a gospel tract that a, a preacher was writing, and he, knowing that I was really into writing, I had started as a young person just loving to write stories and poems, and he said, I think, would you read this and let me know what you think about how I'm doing on this? Well, I read it, and at that very moment, I knew that was the Romans road right there. And I, that was what I was looking for, that it wasn't up to me. It wasn't whether I was good enough or whether I was too bad. It was because Jesus died on a cross for my sins that I could know that I was saved, not because of my works, but because of what he did. And I got down on my knees in my little living room and shag carpet floor. I remember the color, orange and 18, yellow. You were 18. At 18 years old. And I prayed and asked the Lord into my life and into my heart and asked for forgiveness. That was the transformative moment for me. And I have known him ever since. But the funnest thing has been like, okay, when I realized there was such a thing as Christian music, because I was already in music. So then I was like, wait, they do Christian music? Hold on a minute. And I'll never forget when I was first saved, I was listening to Evie on full blast. If anybody's old enough to know the, the wonderful, wonderful singer and, and artist Evie, I was listening to her full blast and singing, praise the Lord, he never changes, in my car loud. And I got pulled over for speeding. Oh, and no. <laughs> I told the police officer, I'm like, but I was just praising and, I, and yeah. it got away from me. And he was like, I'll let you go. Oh, so you did. <laughs> <laughs> so you that's did. my story. <laughs> so did you start writing Christian music? Then? Absolutely. From that moment that I realized I did. And I tragically lost my brother when he was 25 and I was 22. And I wrote my first song about him. Um, and it was called um, With My Own Eyes, which really connected me to heaven. I knew that God was there and Jesus was there. But once my brother was there, I wanted to know a whole lot more about it. And so I wrote my first song. It was called With My Own Eyes that I recorded later. Yeah, so. I would love to hear it sometime. Mm -hmm. I bet you've really influenced your family to your parents. and. Oh, my goodness. My mom 
she came to know the Lord. My father is a Christian. Yeah, I mean, it has spilled over, but I know that that's because of the power of God. Absolutely, it has spilled over, and my children are are amazing. We have six together. So yeah. we have the Brady Bunch, three boys, three girls. He has twin boy and girl. They're amazing. And then I have- I grew up an only child. And I always say, you gotta be careful what you pray for because I have six kids and six grandkids. We have a big family and I wanted a big family. And, but you gotta be careful what you pray for because you might get it. And you I did. Get it. And I love my big family. <laughs> but you know what? God has taken you through some, a lot of battles in the last few mm. years and we're gonna talk about it. I think it's a, a battle that a lot of people are dealing with today in today's world um, and it's addiction. And we're gonna talk about it when we come back. Donna Zane, God has taken you on a powerful journey. You know, when we first got married, uh, as she has said, you know, we began to, to d experience some problems, you know, with her daughter. She had already been going through some, some things and... and uh, now, how old was she at the time? You know? My daughter, at the time that we teenager, started dating, she was you know, 15. Young teenager. Yeah. yeah. And, but as God would have it, you know, and, and I had no idea and I was raising two twins at the time, boy and a girl. And when my son turned 15, this was actually just a few years later after we got married, uh, he began to go off the rails, we call it. And, and honestly, it was, we, it, and I didn't have any idea what to do. I mean, I was just so lost. And, uh, but even though we had began this journey together, I look back on it now and I realize the hand of God of how he had put us together in that room that we talked about earlier and through music. But now this road that we were both walking on with our two children uh, just had to be him. And, and, and I knew that there had to be a way out. But wow, it, it, it wasn't overnight. And we didn't just soon you know, find the answers. In fact, it was impossible what to was find going the on? answers. Yeah. So um, my daughter went down that road of drug use and uh, fell into addiction. And man, she's one of the bravest people I know. I, I, we often share with people, you know, that we we don't tell all the details of their story because as we've learned about community and we've been a part of a recovery community, we've learned that when we put the focus on our own how we do it, um, it really makes an impact on how they do it. And so I can tell you that she was the lowest she could get many times. There were times she was living in her car. There were times I didn't know where she was, but there were also times that there was absolutely nothing I could do. So I had to figure out how to do it myself. So that was the first thing that was going on was that we were in, so it's interesting, Terry, you know, uh, I know that, that anybody who's, who knows anybody knows what this is like, right? Right. So what happens is you start with your child in this battle for their own life and you as a mom want to do what you've always done. You want to run out in the road and stop them from running into traffic. You want to do what you did when they were a toddler, when they were a young child, but you can't pull them back because they just go harder and go farther. And so it was a battle of wills until I began to get the help I needed. We found an incredible community of parents who were walking through addiction recovery and we joined that group as a part of a basement in a church and began to learn how to navigate. And let me just give you a little, a little excerpt of, of my story with my daughter, which she has given me permission to share. And that is that one time she was so deep in, we were early in our marriage and um, she was missing. And for the longest time, whenever things would happen, I would drop everything and run and try to fix her and fix it. And I was not finding myself able to do that. And so I was learning that I needed to heed the spirit on what I reacted to and responded to and what I didn't and really listen and remember that I was powerless over the disease that was happening in her, but that God was powerful and able to restore me to sanity. And so there was a moment when I was in the writing room, I'm a songwriter, and I was in the writing room and we, she had been missing for days and I was scared to death. How old was she at the time? She was 17 at the time. Yes. Uh, and I was scared to death and I couldn't find her. 
but I let go and let God, which is something that we'll talk more about. Uh, and I stayed in the writing room. Even though I thought we may have an idea where she was, Zane thought he had seen her car, and normally I would drop everything and go, but the Holy Spirit just told me to wait. I finished my write, and I got in the car to drive to that space where she was. I pulled in the parking lot of this place, and as I was pulling in, I would have never been able to find her, but God knew the timing was perfect. She was pulling out. We stopped her window to my window. I rolled down the window because I was just going to tell her, I love you, and whatever you choose to do, I need you to know that you can always come home. And she rolled down the window. Then she threw the car door open, ran at my car, slammed her hands on the, on the window and said, you always find me, and dissolved into tears and said, Mama, help me. And at that moment, there was a breaking of the fight and there was a bond that we found together to go ahead and begin the journey of healing. And it was a huge turning point in her life and in my life, in the waiting for me and in her seeing how God moved in perfect timing to get her out of the situation she was in. And she began ready to find her way. Now, there were many other bottoms that she had to find before she finally found now 10 years of sobriety. But as I worked with this community that we learned, that we came into, into relationship with, and as I listened to the Holy Spirit, God began to do things in me that helped me to get control over my reactions and responses and let the Holy Spirit lead. And then that also brought about change for her, which was incredible. What about you? What were you going through at this time? Through all these several tender years that we were, you know, um, together and, and, and our family, and be, then beginning to realize my son was going down the same kind of roads. Uh, as a parent, you just want the answers to know how to fix your kid. Please give me some information on what I should do day to day. And in this group that we began to, to, to be with uh, and other parents that were going through the same thing, we begin to not hear any answers, but we begin to hear this theme about that we should realize that our life had become unmanageable and we're powerless over this. But there's a beautiful prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And when I'd, I'd heard that prayer before and I began to pray it every day, and then suddenly there just began to be this tiny little step that I began to realize, you know what? I need my own recovery. Mm -hmm. And that is the message really, Terry, that we, we share with others is, hey, the answers, they're not gonna come. I mean, they may never come. And, and they're all, the answers in Jesus, but it's so hard of a road when you're on, it just, feels, everything feels cloudy. And it just feels like hopeless at times. But the message is that when you take it to the cross and you put it down, and at Jesus' feet, and you begin to pray those simple prayers and realize that step by step, that He can work in your life and He can build. And then you begin to, to wake up and realize, hey, I can exercise. I can go and have dinner. I can begin to hang out with friends again. I can finish and my because, songwriting session. <laughs> because, right, because what you, 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 lose, your, you lose yourself in, in, in the crazy train that we call it when you're on this cycle uh, with someone that's living in addiction. But let me emphasize, this didn't happen quickly. It didn't happen overnight. It was a process, honestly, of years, and this has been a, about a 12-year journey for mm -hmm. us. And we're gonna talk about that. You, you wrote a song from the basement to the altar and the journey to get where you are today and the recovery. We're gonna talk about it when we come back. Donna Zane, you were talking about it's a process. It took a long time. And during that time, you wrote a beautiful song, mm -hmm. From the Basement to the Altar. Yeah, we co-wrote this song with a, one of our good friends, Sue C. Smith. And, uh, when, and as we do often here in Nashville, we get in these little rooms together and uh, write songs. And so that day, I just had it heavy on my heart that I wanted to write a song about some things that we had been through, but other things that we had watched our, our kids and others go through. 
then we began to talk about, well, our experience actually is in the basement of a church and they have AA meetings there and Al-Anon meetings. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was, we just began to describe the experience of, of being in that place and talking about, uh, about God and how he can change our lives. And uh, we began to write this song. Will so, you sing yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Every Tuesday in that old church basement The chairs are circled and the coffee's making A room of fighters who were hopeless cases They come together on a first name basis Everybody's got one thing in common They all show up because they've hit rock bottom when they're feeling broken and forgotten, there's a hand to lead them through their problems. From the basement to the altar, step by step you learn what grace can do. It takes the down and outers to show that only God can carry you. He says, hello, my name is shame and heartbreak. Ooh. Trying to move beyond the guilt I can't shake. Ooh. And when I'm haunted by a million mistakes, I'm finding out there's nothing he won't take. From the basement to the altar, Step by step, you learn what grace can do. It takes the down and outers to show that only God can carry you from the basement to the altar. It's a beautiful song. I'm sure it has touched many, many people. Grateful. So what has life been like for you now? <laughs> Good. You know, there's a verse in Matthew that says that if, if, if we want good things, and I'm not quoting it exactly, Matthew 7, I believe, uh, if, if, we, if we want good things for our children, imagine what good things God wants for our children. Well... God has done great things in our children and wants good things for them. And we also have a community of friends who have had to face some harder things than we have with our children, but they have still seen that God's faithfulness is ever present and ever real in all of it. And so what good things have we seen? That God is faithful in this life and in the life to come. And our children are doing beautiful things. Um, our daughter is is just incredibly healthy, and you said she, ten, she's ten years sober. She's ten years sober, and she's actually incorporating her faith into yoga. So she has gone through the yoga training, and she's incorporating her faith. Um, she is just this completely joy flows is the name of her yoga. Uh, joy flows because joy is flowing from her. Our son is is solid and yeah, is, yeah. as we say it gainfully yeah. employed right well, <laughs> gainfully he's, employed he, yeah he took his addiction and he's turned it into positive uh, things for his <laughs> life and he's doing wonderful work he's uh, and ju we're just so proud of them. Well, how did just so proud how did they recover? Did they get into a That's, recovery? Oh, program? now that right there is yeah. the is the great question. Yeah. Yes, our daughter actually became a part of some people may be familiar called Celebrate Recovery, I've which is a church based mm -hmm. uh, recovery program, and she was very deep and very involved and continues to uh, live in those principles um, of the twelve step program with God, with Jesus walking side by side with her, and uh, our son went through they went through lots of re yeah, right lots, lots of, of rehabs, rehabs. Yeah. <laughs> we, we yeah. might relapse did they have relapse and yeah. oh, i think a lot relapse of relapse is yeah. very much a part of the journey it's uh, 
Uh, and honestly, even for parents, relapse is a part of our journey as well. And, and that's a deeper concept, you know, to talk about. But, because it's the um, idea of yeah. you go and look where they're at, you track them, you follow them. And yeah. then one day you notice that you went for two weeks without trying to figure out where they are. And you go, I think I'm in recovery right now. But then when you go try to fix it and try to shake it out of them yourself, you realize I'm in relapse. Yeah. One of the things that we say to our children is that we look up to you. Uh -huh. It took a lot of courage to face this addiction head on. You know, we want as parents for our children to look up to us, yeah. but we say we want, we look up to you, don't we? We do. And I want to say this, that it's one day at a time. And today we celebrate that all of our kids are reasonably okay, all of them. And, uh, but this is one day at a time and we continue to let go and let God. And it's not like this is done. Not, it wouldn't, just didn't finish. It's, it's, a, it's a process. Is that what you would to say to out. a parent yeah. right now? Yes, Absolutely. Listening? Sure. Absolutely. It's going, so many people are going through this. Yes. Let, and, and I think what we would say, and I love when you say, you tell the let go and let God, you know, and the, that whole concept of like every day we, whatever we face, people go through hard things. People who are watching right now, they might be going through a cancer journey. They might be going through an addiction recovery journey. They might be going through so many hard things, but we all every day have a chance to turn that over to God and see what he can do with it because what he can do with it is so much that's better right. than what I can do And you know, we wrote another song on our new album that's Wait coming out. It's Wait called for it. Wait For It. Yes. And that's a concept here that we, we want to share with people. Because well, we have about a minute left. Can yeah. you do a chorus for me? That'd we be can. Amazing, yeah. let's do it. Donna Zane, thank you so much. What a blessing. What a powerful to be here. message for others to hear. God bless thank you both. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Terry. My friend, are you struggling or you have a friend or a family member struggling with addiction? Jesus is right there. He has the answer. Wait for him. This is today's Nashville. This is faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.